Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a banned colored Super Friends Planeswalkers deck and the main build around card as voted on by my supporters on Patreon is Urza Assembles the Titans, a 5 mana read ahead saga. On chapter 1 we can scry 4 and then we may reveal the top card of our library. If it's a Planeswalker card we can put it into our hand. Then on chapter 2 we can put a Planeswalker card with mana value 6 or less from our hand straight onto the battlefield. And finally we may activate the loyal Loyalty abilities of Planeswalkers we control twice this turn rather than only once. So that's the money maker here, the final chapter allowing us to combo off with some of our Planeswalkers. And one in particular is very synergistic with Urza Assembles the Titans, and that is Tamyo Completed Sage can be played for 4 mana if we pay 2 life, in which case it enters with 2 or less loyalty. But for 5 mana, we get a 5 loyalty Planeswalker, which can a plus 1 to tap up to 1 target artifact or creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So if we put Tamyo in play with our Urza Assembles the Titan's second chapter, then we have a 5 loyalty Planeswalker, we get to plus 1 up to 6, tap something down, wouldn't be able to untap, so Tamyo kind of protects itself, and then on the following turn we get our third chapter and we get to activate Tamyo twice, meaning we can plus 1 up to 7, tapping something else down, and then right away minus 7 ultimate, creating a Tamyo's Notebook, a legendary colorless artifact token, saying spells cost 2 generic mana less to cast, and we can tap it to draw a card. So Tamyo's Notebook is awesome, and we can achieve it relatively easily if we can combine it with Urza Assembles the Titans. So that's one of our primary objectives, is getting this Notebook in play, which will then make it pretty easy to win the game, even have some cool synergies like Teferi who slows the sunsets, plus one ability, which can untap Tamiya's Notebook just to draw an extra card each turn, which is pretty sweet. Then we're also playing a one-off Ajani Sleeper Agent, which plays pretty well in a Super Friends style of deck, as his plus one ability can reveal the top card of our library. If it's a creature or planeswalker card, we can put it into our hand, otherwise we can still decide to put it on the bottom. Now it's not the best planeswalker ever, so we're only playing one copy here, as it is pretty situational. We don't have a ton of creatures in our deck, but it's still nice to have access to, especially because the minus three can distribute three plus one counters among up to three target creatures and they also gain vigilance until end of turn which can sometimes help us play around an opposing wandering emperor and then the minus six emblem if we can ever get to it would be pretty fun as well if we can cast enough creatures and planeswalkers afterwards to poison our opponent to death and then we've got four copies of Wandering Emperor ourselves, of course. Great interaction at exiling opposing copies of Tenacious Underdog with the minus two and making some Samurai tokens with Vigilance that we can also put additional counters onto with the plus one ability. And then we've got two copies of a Ren and Seven, making giant tree folk tokens with a minus three, and the plus one can help us find additional lands. And then we've got two copies of Vivian on the Hunt, which can make 4-4 four, four Rhino Warrior tokens with a minus one. And then the plus two potentially lets us sacrifice a creature to find a creature in our deck with mana value equal to that sacrifice creature plus one. And that's the reason why we have a one-off extraction specialist in our deck, so we can maybe sacrifice Spirited Companion, a two mana one one that draws a card when it enters, and then get our extraction specialist, get our same companion back right away, and draw an extra card and have a specialist in play. And all these cheap creatures are useful at protecting our planeswalkers by chum blocking and making sure we can get to the turn where we get our final chapter of Urza Assembles the Titans so we can activate all our planeswalkers a whole bunch. Wedding announcement, of course, a staple in most white decks in standard nowadays, making plenty of 1 1 tokens, eventually also pumping the team with the transformed wedding festivity, maybe drawing a few cards in the process, and also protecting you against opposing copies of Invoke Despair, which would otherwise maybe make us sacrifice or saga as well as our planeswalkers so having announcement can sort of mitigate that and the tokens also line up nicely against Liliana's minus two ability and help us buy more time and then we also have some ramp with a full set of a joint exploration can be kicked for a green in which case it sort of turns into a better growth spiral as we get to scry to then draw a card and then potentially put a land on the battlefield as well and then we can also cast it for two mana if we don't need the extra ramp to just scry to and then draw a card and then we also have two copies of the Celestus, giving us a bit of ramp, maybe some card selection and life gain if it switches between day and night. 
And then I think we've covered most of it, except for the two copies of Sanctuary Warden. A 5-5 flyer enters with two shield counters on it, and when it enters or attacks we can remove a counter from any creature or planeswalker we control, so that also includes loyalty counters. And if we do draw a card and create a 1-1 green and white citizen creature token, so Sanctuary Warden, another nice win condition, can help us stabilize the board by making extra tokens right away, and also plays around cards like Invoke Despair by coming into play with an extra citizen token, and then we usually don't mind removing one shield counter, but we can also of course play with all the loyalty counters of our planeswalkers to draw extra cards and make extra 1-1s. And then our mana base has the usual channel lands from Kamigawa, giving us a tiny bit more interaction, and then some basics, and then tons of dual lands, as well as our headquarters. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that's missing blue mana, but I'll try and keep, and then hopefully Companion will draw us into the blue mana to kick Exploration to cast Assembles the Titans on turn 4. Opponent Esper Colors with turn 2 Underdog. Still no blue mana, sadly. So I'll play Companion in case we draw our Tri-Land. Alright, there's our blue. Pass it back. And then can just curve Emperor into Assembles the Titans. Kaito. There are many secrets I don't and then uh, Underdog will be happy to exile with Wandering Emperor. So I could do that now. Sure. Could leave a companion back in case of a blitzed underdog. Just hit for one. It's gonna be a larcenist instead. Instant or sorcery, so it can take away our joint exploration. At least can take our saga. So best case scenario we just draw an expensive planeswalker so we can go straight to chapter 2. Discarding a farmhand. Alright, there we go. So... Companions can go after Kaito. Opponent's probably just gonna take it to try and finish off Wandering Emperor. I feel bad for your mentor and then we'll assemble the Titans starting on Chapter 2. And Tamiyo can lock down the Larcenist as well. And then next turn we could emblem Tamiyo already since we get to activate Tamiyo twice, so unless they've got removal for Tamiyo or a haste creature, we should be good to go. Kaito makes a ninja, that's okay. And a wedding announcement, that's acceptable. Alright, so we get to live the dream here. Plus Tamiyo, Lockdown, probably Larcenist once again. Emblem. And then we get to draw a card. Cast a 4 mana Sanctum Warden if we want. Could also get Vivian going. And then still play Kicked's Joint Exploration. Which I also don't mind, since we get to activate Vivian twice this turn. So, yes, let's go with Vivian. Can make a Rhino. Plus on a Companion. And then we're probably going to make a Samurai. Attack with these first. And then I'm going to plus two Vivian to get Extraction Specialist as well. Opponent trades. 
That's fine. So we'll make a Samurai, or we can exile the Larcenist with a minus two. And we'll just make a Samurai. And then plus two, sacrificing Companion, getting Extraction Specialist, get Companion back, draw card. And then we can still play Kicked Exploration, but we'll do that in the opponent's turn. Well, that was a pretty sweet turn. Let's see if they have a board wipe, just another Larcenist. Respond with Exploration Kicked. And uh, don't really need either of these. And they won't be able to take anything. Double white for Wandering Emperor is pretty spicy. Yeah, time use notebook doing work, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is promising. Turn 3 exploration can lead to turn 4 full price Taimyo. One on black white. We do need to pick up some more lanes here. But I'll wait to kick Exploration. Alright, Celestus also works. We'll play that instead, so we're at least guaranteed a fourth mana. Opponent off to a slow start, finally playing Underdog. So we could lock down Underdog with Tamio, but then it's gonna come into play with only three loyalty. So instead, we could pass with a plan of uh, flashing an Emperor, or we could cast Exploration and then probably still Companion afterwards, which I prefer. Develop our mana. Now, we did not find a land here, so hopefully one's next. Still nothing. That's pretty rough. We drew three of our four six drops. At least Celestis transforms. And probably don't want another exploration, do we? Alright, there's our land. So now I could either Wandering Emperor Exile Underdog or Time Yo Lockdown Underdog. Although we have to be mindful of a potential um, Invoke Despair next turn, which can make us sacrifice our Planeswalker. So I think I prefer Wandering Emperor, despite it being less mana efficient as it at least deals with Underdog. I am the Emperor of Tamigawa, and I will protect my people. Opponent's gonna cut it down so it doesn't get exiled. Fair enough. Also denies the life gain. So now they could blitz it to kill Emperor. And yeah, now the Underdog also will be harder to lock down with Tamio. Henrika draws. And Ren and 7th a draw. Okay. Yeah, the underdog and the graveyard's problematic. I guess we could Ren and 7 and then look for land with a plus. Since we don't want to make a creature in the face of Henrika. And then Wandering Emperor, I guess, can make a token at this point. But it's probably gonna die to Henrika without giving us much value. But if they sacrifice Underdog to Henrika, maybe Ren and 7 takes less damage. Alright, it's gonna be an Invoke Despair, killing Planeswalker and Creature. That hurts. Henrika kind of forced to transform. Okay, so now we could play Tamio and have a Spirited Companion to protect it from Underdog. As opposed to Sanctuary Warden, which can make a token and draw, which is also reasonable. But we'll try Tamio. 
I guess I should start with companion first. Celestis triggers. And can discard another. Opponent playing vehicles as well. Probably for a bank buster. It's gonna be a wedding announcement for now. And a trespasser. Okay. So we're doing a decent job of protecting our Taimyo, which we're gonna try and ultimate. If we top decked Urza assembles the Titans, we would have been able to ultimate Taimyo right now by just going to the final chapter. Instead, we can lock down Henrika once again, play Sanctuary Warden, and see what we draw. Removing a shield counter seems fine. Finding a Teferi. Yeah, Tamiya could also get back Wandering Emperor, and then minus on Henrika, but I really want to give ourselves the chance of ultimating. So we'll pass. Three blockers versus two attackers, so even if they blitz underdog, we have enough. It's gonna be an Edgar. That's fine. Hoping for no right of oblivion here, but nope, just wedding announcement transforming, so we get to emblem Tamio. Not gonna mess around. And then great synergy with the notebook is the fairy untapping it. Which is pretty fun. So start by drawing. Our story belongs to the children of Phyrexia. Finding a Jani, which we can play for three mana here. Okay, so we have a ton of options now. So how about we play Ren and Seven? Uh, we could make a token with it. And then remove a loyalty counter with the Warden when it attacks. Calm the trees, and you will rot at their roots. The entire forest is in awe. So we'll move to combat. Find our Urza assembles the Titans, wow. Okay, so that can set up something powerful. Maybe wait until next turn. For now we can play Teferi, and that's gonna untap Land, Notebook, and Warden. And then draw with Notebook again. Could also assemble the Titans on Chapter 2. One mana wedding announcement sounds good. And then Vivian, maybe plussing on Spirited Companion. Sure. Like my kind of place. Well, it's a dog Getting extraction dog specialist. Dog and drawing a card. Okay. Announcement makes another token. So we're quickly assembling a powerful board. Infernal Grasp kills our Reach creature. So Henrika can maybe threaten our Planeswalkers if they take out Sanctuary Warden. We're just gonna try and untap with as many Planeswalkers as possible, so next turn we can have some fun. Henrika goes after Vivian. Um, yeah, they can pump Henrika here. 
fine to block and if they pump remove a shield counter. We've got another warden anyways. It's gonna be Wandering Emperor to put a plus one counter on it instead. I'm not overconfident. You're just I guess the activation only adds power, so if they needed to save Henrika. Alright, that's most of their turn gone. And another wedding announcement. Okay, now it's time for the fireworks. Step one, draw with notebook. Next, Wandering Emperor can exile Henrika. We can assemble the Titans, starting Chapter 3. Play in a Jani. And then start with Teferi, plusing. Can also tap down creatures. Draw with a notebook. Activate Teferi again. Or we can wait until we attack first, but embarrassment of riches here. Draw again. We can plus a Jenny a few times. Finding another Tamiyo. Land can bottom. We have allies. And then Vivian can make a bunch of rhinos. Stand in our way. I dare you. We can activate Ren and Seven. Finding some lanes. And then how about we play Tamyo? Full loyalty. We can plus locking something down. And then minus five. Getting back our saga. Starting on chapter three again. So we can activate our Planeswalkers. Hmm, never mind. I guess we are limited to only twice and not plus one time. That's okay. So we wasted a bit of our time here. there. Right, kill Wandering Emperor. Remove loyalty of Vivian. You're getting in the way. And, uh, yeah, that should do it. Discard a couple lanes. And our opponent gets to untap. I was hoping we could get back, assemble the Titans, and activate our Planeswalkers a third time, but it specifically says you can activate them twice, as opposed to one more time. So a slight miscalculation, but we should still be able to ultimate our Ajani soon. Which is the ultimate goal here. Opponent sends in the team. Exiling Tamio. And we'll line up some blocks. There might be a sweeper in our future. Which is fine. Don't have many cards left in our deck, so we'll have to win with what we have in play. Yeah, ideally we would have untapped our Sanctuary Warden with Teferi, so it's not exposed to a Wandering Emperor's minus two. And of course, ideally we would not have minus five to Tamyo to accomplish nothing. But other than that, we had a pretty sweet turn, all thanks to Tamyo's notebook. Man, our opponent explodes. All right, they timed out, so we did not get to see our Ajani ultimate, but still a very satisfying game. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw. Missing a third land and a green mana, but we do have a turn two companion. Yeah, we'll get a few draw steps to find lands, and we're playing 25. Put on blue white. And there's our land, so we can maybe play Wedding Announcement. Opponent with an Impulse. Now for opponents playing a control deck with Karn's Silax, they can easily destroy all our Planeswalkers. So that could be tough. But at least we're pretty decent against Farewell. That resolves, makes a token. And there's a Silex. Well, at least we can still draw a card on the way out here with Wedding Announcement. Not gonna play Celestus. Sadly, can't hit our land drop. So we'll have to discard to hand size. Maybe Wandering Emperor can go. Opponent's gonna blow up the Silex. And we'll play a Celestus. And then next turn, maybe Teferi can untap Celestus. Another Silex. Okay. Now what? Um, could run in seven and then just plus to dig for lands and get our value that way. Could also time you keep the Silex to lock down. Did not consider that. Yeah, I guess that prevents him from using it. Okay, let's give that a try. And our opponent's gonna syncopate for one to prevent that from happening. And yep, yeah, opponent's gonna blow up Silex anyway, just for Celestus. And then now a Sanctuary Warden could be decent, although our opponent does have Counterspell mana up. So I think this might be a good spot to pass and flash in a Wandering Emperor to apply pressure. And if they counter a Wandering Emperor, we can maybe resolve our Warden. All right, still two cards in hand. Another Tamiyo. Teferi still doesn't help us double spell here after untapping a land. So, yeah, maybe give them a Vivian, which I don't care about too much. I mean, it's a fine card, but um, I think Warden might end up being better. Although that being said, if they have Farewell, it can still exile Warden, whereas at least Vivian can make several Rhinos. So maybe it is more valuable, in which case... Could go for Teferi and then just minus two, which they may also counter. Yep. Okay. Opponent goes digging. Not sure what the opponent's win condition is. Could be a hole breaker horror. So maybe try Tamio. And I should play a land first, in case of uh, syncopates. And time you could minus four to get back to ferry, or we could get back a wedding announcements. Let's go with uh, to ferry here. And then to ferry will minus two. Opponent's got the Fateful Absence, takes out the Fairy, find an announcement, and we can still crack our clue token end of turn. Alright, so we're outvaluing the blue-white control deck here, although Memory Deluge is not what we wanted to see. Now they can dig pretty deep to find more answers or win conditions.
Okay, extraction specialists does have a spirit to companion to get back, so that's nice. Time you will plus. And then... Yeah, I don't have the mana to double spell with Warden. So I think going... Wedding announcements to maybe force them to cast another Silex or Farewell, and then we can flash in Wandering Emperor. Although I do maybe want to play Specialist before uh, they cast Farewell to get my companion back while it's still in the graveyard. That's reasonable. Sure. Was maybe worth it to cast Specialist first in case of Syncopate. That works. So we get to draw our card. And Urza assembles the Titans could be quite exciting. So my guess is we'll see a farewell. Our opponent's just gonna pass and flashback Deluge. And if they exile graveyards, then they also get rid of their own Deluge here. So it's gonna be Silex, which we can keep tapped down with Tamio. And then. We could assemble the Titans if we want. Should probably start by attacking. Could see Wandering Emperor as well here. Yeah, lots of interesting options. Probably go Chapter 1 on Urza Assembles to get value in case they do end up casting Farewell. Although, yeah, if they have Wandering Emperor, they could pressure Tamiyo with a Knight and kill it. So that's a reason to at least provide a blocker. So maybe I should run in 7 or Vivian here. Yeah, because I do want to protect Tamio from an opposing Emperor. So now might be the time for Vivian, which doesn't overextend as much as a Sanctuary Warden in case of Farewell. Right, there's a farewell. Keeps the graveyards intact. So the time is going to keep plusing. And then now might be a good time for a Sanctuary Warden, which can draw. Removing. Well, we're slowly getting to an ultimate. Can also use Tamiya to get back something from the graveyard. So I think shield counter for now. And Boseju could also blow up Silex, so I'm hesitant to play it untapped for Companion here. Opponent flashing back Deluge main phase. Okay, so they're fully tapped out. Urza assembles the Titans, maybe Chapter 2, put in Vivian. Sounds appealing. And then Vivian can make a Rhino. And then we'll just plus on Silex again. And those Sanctuary Warden attack and potentially get exiled by an opposing Wandering Emperor. Or do we maybe wait to, I guess, the Fairies exiled, so can't rely on him? Uh, yeah, it's probably fine to attack here. And then remove a loyalty of Vivian. Keep the shield counter. You've got claws. And then we can still flash in a Wandering Emperor. Opponent could have their own Teferi, which could untap the Silex to still blow up the board, so that's scary. It's gonna be Farewell instead. Exiling creatures, enchantments, and the graveyards. So that will get rid of our Assembles the Titans, sadly. Okay, that happens. Can still play an Emperor. Opponent finally killing Tamio. Alright, but we still have our Boseju to deal with Silex. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. And a backup Tamio. Okay, so 
assembles the Titans, put in Tamiyo perhaps. We could put in Renan 7 and then play Tamiyo for 4 mana. Or we could hang on to Boseju on the off chance that they can untap the Silex. And then just put in Tamiyo, which we would be able to ultimate next turn. And then we'll make a couple more tokens. And I guess we can play a companion and then crank the clue if we don't need to use Poseidou. Okay, put us down to seven as well in the meantime. Three cards in hand. Could see a depopulate to wipe the board. Silver Scrutiny for five instead. So that's gonna reload their hand. Although no mana to cast depopulate. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So we've managed to outgrind the blue-white control deck with our planeswalkers here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is promising. Exploration setting up turn for Ren and Seven. Opponent on a red aggro deck. That's a breath of fresh air after playing mono black. But could also be a tough matchup. Although Tamiyo is promising. It's gonna be harder to emblem Tamiyo against mono red as opposed to mono black, since they tend to have more creatures that can pressure our planeswalkers. And yeah, that's an excellent start. Turn to adversary with a counter. So opponent's not messing around. Sanctuary Warden will be a nice way to stabilize as well. And a Phoenix Chick. And let's make that two. Okay, so we're taking whopping seven damage. At least we can hope our Tree Folk from Renan 7 keeps us alive. I think we just need land. And we still haven't found one, so we may not be able to play Renan 7. Alright, there we go. So yeah, Tree Folk would be a 5-5. Five five. Opponent could still kill it, maybe finish it off with a burn spell. Alternative is Wandering Emperor, Exile Adversary, gain 2. That's just a speed bump. Tamiyo plussing doesn't seem all that exciting. So I think we do make a Tree Folk here. And hope it survives. And then, best case scenario, draw a land to play Sanctuary Warden, which will help us stabilize. It's going to be Adversary for 2 mana. And yeah, we're just dead to a Lightning Strike here, if that's what they have left. Ooh, they're using a Lightning Strike on the Tree Folk, maybe missing the lethal. I'll take it. Okay, so we can plus Ren and Seven. Looking for land. We found them. And then now Warden makes a token. So that technically keeps us alive. If I go Wandering Emperor, Exile at five. That's probably not as good as just playing Sanctuary Warden. And I'll remove a shield counter. Alright, still dead to any haste creature or burn spell. And that's definitely a haste creature. Okay, so yeah, Red had a great start. And we're not packing any sweepers here to help out in the matchup. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Can play turn 2 companion, turn 3 kicked exploration. This may be a game where we use a Janice minus 3 on companion. Opponents on a mono black.
No, never mind. Black White and their own companion. So now, maybe attack, play Wedding Announcement, or just Wedding Announcement pass, so next turn we can start drawing cards with it. The only drawback is a potential Rite of Oblivion exiling it, in which case a trade would be better. And there's also the issue of a potential Extraction Specialist from the opponent, which is a reason not to block. So maybe we just Exploration here, and then next turn go Companion plus Announcements. Eh, opponent's got the Extraction Specialist. Fair enough, so probably should not have traded then. And uh, we'll keep land. Do I want another companion? Uh, let's dig for some planeswalkers. The fairy could come in handy. So we can companion plus announcements or the fairy untap, play companion, which may be okay too. So we get some more mana going. And a Tamios Excellence. It's gonna be the Pilgrim to start draining. And then Companion could jump. Uh, what's my plan for next turn? Could play a lower loyalty Tamyo alongside Wedding Announcements. If we plus the Fairy, which seems fine. So I don't need to jump right now. That will give us more options on maybe protecting Tamiya in the future. So Tamiya can keep Specialist locked down. And play announcements. It's gonna be a march exiling our announcement, sadly. Taking a missionary with it. And Pilgrim goes after Tamio. Yeah, I think we chump. And an Archangel kicked. Can deal two damage to Tamio, so good thing we blocked. Sanctuary Warden was a good draw. Could remove a shield counter, could remove a loyalty counter. Teferi might want a minus two at this point. So could see the advantage of removing loyalty of Tamiya, which we're probably not going to be able to keep alive, and we've got a backup in hand anyway. Finding another wedding announcement or specialist. Both are good. Kind of like the idea of Specialist with a Companion in the Graveyard. And then lock down the Angel. You do not write this story. Now a Rite of Oblivion would be painful, but would have been the case for the entirety of this game, pretty much. Opponent passes, maybe with our Wandering Emperor available to exile Sanctuary Warden, and even though I could untap it, of course they can exile it at instant speed. So what's our plan? I guess a Jani can give Vigilance to Sanctuary Warden to play around it. That seems good.
but I might want to distribute the plus one counters among more than just one creature. So maybe specialists get back companion. So we'll minus three. And then Sanctuary Warden, Token, Companion. We are watchful eye and sharpened steel. And then we can attack, remove a counter from Companion with Sanctuary Warden. Warden takes it. And then we'll lock down Archangel again. And we can untap some stuff. Okay. So Johnny's Vigil is potentially coming in handy here. Although we don't know for a fact that they had a Wandering Emperor in hand. And then assembles the Titans. Next turn could be quite effective, maybe even putting in Tamiya with a second chapter to try and set up the emblem. And now Wandering Emperor can exile whatever we tap down with Teferi, including this dragon, which can otherwise drain us. So we'll start with a Jani. Lands we probably don't need. And then... How likely are they to chum block with Midnight Sky here? I guess I'll uh, minus two, just in case, get back Companion. That way we'll have two cards to discard we don't care about. Attack with Warden. And that's probably it. Removing a Loyalty of Taimyo, since we're going to put another one in play. Finding a third. You only think you changed the ending. Untap Warden and Lance. Don't worry. It's only and then Urza assembles. Starting on Chapter 2. Put in Tamiya at full loyalty. And we can plus on maybe the Midnight Sky or Archangel. And then we can always exile the Midnight Sky if it attacks with our Wandering Emperor here. You and, uh, yeah, victory. play this tapped and pass. And then next turn, hopefully Emblem Atamio. Can also bounce with Soaring City now if necessary. Companion's fine. And if they can deal with Tamio, we've got a backup to maybe still get to the emblem in time. They could also get rid of Orsaga. So there's a lot to consider if they have removal, especially something like Rite of Oblivion. All right, opponent stays back with Midnight Sky. Still gonna play Emperor here, make a token. Untap, and two boy even drew a Vivian. Step one, plus with Taimyo. Emblem time, yo. You do not write the story. I have become a draw with our notebook. This is the one true history of the Okay, multiverse. make some mana. We can plus the fairy. And draw with notebook. Plus Emperor on Let's see here. Will we be able to give Vigilance with Ajani again? We can, if we plus and then minus. So, sure, maybe the Flyer. Could go with Specialist, since we will gain First Strike. And then Ajani pluses. Finding a run in 7. Ajani minuses. So we can play around another Wandering Emperor. Then we can minus two Wandering Emperor, Exile Midnight Sky, play Renan 7, play Vivian, activate everything, 
too much value. Awesome. Well, this Urza assembles the Titans Super Friends deck worked a lot better than I expected it to. Of course, you're still gonna be disadvantaged against hyper-aggressive decks, especially since we're not playing any main deck sweepers. Could potentially be addressed by adding Depopulate to the deck, although I haven't found that card to be extremely effective against Mono Black since they have so many recursive threats and are attacking you from so many different angles. So I just prefer enacting my own game plan, drawing cards, playing some cheap creatures or enchantments that we don't mind sacrificing to an Invoke Despair, and then hopefully take over with our Urza Assembles the Titans, and that seemed to be working pretty well in these grindy matchups. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.